Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God, our loving Father, and Jesus, our living Redeemer and Savior. Amen. The word of our Lord to which we turn is found in that epistle reading, especially these words giving us focus. Have this mind among you which is yours in Christ Jesus. Dearly loved and gathered people of God, it is God who has gathered you. Psalm 147 even speaks about that in our intro. Dear people of God, we all share in a sinful human tendency to more often than we should think that we are the center of our universe. Yes. And while you and I each have a unique identity, and this is a God-given gift and thing that God has wrought, we are not what life is all about. It's all about Jesus, ultimately. And as St. Paul wrote to the Philippian believers, he wanted to showcase for them the centrality of our life and our hope in Jesus Christ. What he gave them by the Holy Spirit's guiding was preserved so that you and I might benefit. The witness of salvation. It's all about Jesus and his completed work of the cross. You see, God has prepared from eternity a place, a wonderful place for his people. But long ago, long ago, our race separated from him. It was sin that did it. From the original rebellion in the garden to our own countless thoughts, words, and deeds that failed to honor the standard of God's holy law, our sin piles up. It piles up. Hear God's word. Old Testament words, there is not a righteous man upon the earth who does what is right and never sins, from Ecclesiastes. New Testament word, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3. Old Testament word, but your iniquities have separated you from your God, Isaiah 59. But God in his mercy was determined that you not be separated from him forever. This is the good news. The good news that in his wondrous love he sent his dear son to die, to bear our sin. And by universal decree, God had said, the soul that sins shall die. You heard that from the Old Testament reading from Ezekiel 18 this morning. Human sin and human guilt require human death. Think on that momentarily. Human sin and human guilt require human death. For this very reason, the Son of God, Jesus our Lord, as we confess in the Nicene Creed, for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And the valuation of the Son of God is such that his real human death will atone for every human being, whoever has lived, is living, or will yet live. Thus the scriptures read, as St. Peter writes, Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Since our gracious and great saving is solely through Jesus Christ our Lord, it should be easy to cling to Christ, right? Oh, not so fast. The experience of life and the testimony of the struggles of those who've gone before us and the witness of the cultural decay around us ought to remind us that the satanic foe, the enemy of God and our souls, is actively seeking those whom he might destroy. Not to mention the sweeping, current-like effects of culture of the world around us, as well as our own sinful nature daily, moment by moment, ever wanting to pull us away from being anchored to Christ. Perhaps it was an acknowledgement of such powerful forces like these that the word of God from St. Jude's lips spoke in a powerful way in a very small letter. These words, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Yes, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. 
If this were easy to do, or automatic, the Word of God wouldn't go to such lengths to warn us of the danger of failing to cling to Christ and Him alone. This is precisely why the Apostle writes, as he did this morning, words we heard. We heard these words. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Pause for a moment. Now, next, in a move reminiscent of Isaiah's words from last week, that God's thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts, he goes on to say, and puts before us the example of Jesus' great humility. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus' journey to the cross was God's word in a whole host of predictions and prophecies Jesus' journey to the cross was God's word brought to completion. And this is most certainly true, that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord, precisely because Jesus went to the cross for us, for our sins, for our death that we deserved. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. This is true for the redeemed in heaven, those already there, the church triumphant, as well as those on earth while they're here, the church militant. You hear the root word for military in there because we have to battle against sin. We have to battle against the things that would wrench us away from Christ. And if it weren't for God giving us his spirit and giving us his promises, Satan would surely succeed, but he will not. He will not. Meanwhile, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess, and it'll be out of great, profound gratitude, love, and wonder. God has great blessing in store for all who trust Christ. Furthermore, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. It's also true for those not numbered among the redeemed, remember? And it goes on to say, on earth, under the earth, those begrudgingly on their way to a terrifying, unending, excruciating judgment we call hell. For this reason, there's a note of urgency in such words like this, as we've heard. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Yes, we want this free gift of eternal life that God offers. Of course we do, but we also want to pass it on. Psalm 22, I encountered some words in my devotions this past week, telling how God's great saving in Christ will be told to the coming generation, and they shall proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn. Think of it. That's the point of embracing the Christian conduct described in the epistle reading, so that it might draw others to Christ as they see our good deeds, as they glorify our Father who is in heaven. Our lights show so shining before men. And he speaks of it in such a way. He says, Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God and without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. I'll stop the quote there. We want to pass it on. That's really, really important. That's also the goal of that workshop I plugged earlier. It's going to be held this coming Saturday at Hanover Lutheran Church to pattern our home lives, 
to pattern our devotional lives to our families and especially to our children. So, like I say, commercial here. If you want a carpool, get a hold of me. Be glad to have some company. Jesus came to demonstrate humility. That is, giving up all that was his to go to the cross for us, for you, for me, to put others, all others, ahead of himself. Think about this. He's not only our savior, but he's our model too. Have this mind among you, which is yours in Christ Jesus, the word says. Many people operate out of a framework or belief that once I've come to know Christ, the matter is settled, my eternal destiny is clear, no and yes. It is possible to fall from faith through neglect, through neglect of God's faith-sustaining word and sacraments. Beware that that never be you. But as living and active faith is cultivated by the Holy Spirit, actively working in you through his word and his life-imparting gifts, we call sacraments, you will also find yourself more and more drawn to Jesus as the central focus of our lives. We hear it. We know it's true. But one day we shall experience the glory of the triune God in his presence eternally. And then we shall experientially know that it truly is all about Jesus. Mm Mm-hmm. Now may God's rich peace guard and preserve your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.